So the 1.4 TFSI engine is a fantastic little engine. We've done another video on the 1.4 TFSI, which was a general one, which covered the EA111, the 112, and the 211. It didn't go into too much detail on the newer engines, so that's something I'm hoping to address in this video. I've got the EA211 in my Audi A3. So there's a few things that I've learned from feedback that I've had on the other video and things that I've picked up while researching and investigating mods for this fantastic engine. And there's a few things that you just need to bear in mind. So this video really is just going to summarize the points that I've discovered that you need to bear in mind when you're looking for upgrades for your EA211 engine. The ECU used on the EA211 is the Bosch MED17 ECU, which has the Infineon Tricore processor, which allows a lot more flexibility over control, speed of response in terms of the computer, so it can get more power and more performance and better economy from the engine. Indeed, I found that I went from a 2-litre TDI to the 1.4 TFSI, and I'm finding the fuel economy superior on the TFSI, and also it just feels much more lively than the 2-litre TDI, although both are great engines. So the EA211 came in a variety of engine sizes. There was a 1-litre variant, a 1.2, a 1.4 and a more recent 1.5 version. The 1.4 and 1.5 are very, very similar engines. The extra capacity you get on the 1.5 just gives you more flexibility, a little bit better fuel economy, and it just feels a little more torquey low down. But I've driven both, and the differences between them are negligible, to say the least, in everyday driving. So the overall design of this engine, the Volkswagen Group have endeavoured to make the engine easier to build, quicker to build. The engine is lighter, more compact. They've incorporated a lot of one-piece designs into the engine itself. So Notably, the cams are pressed into the head at the factory, which is a little bit annoying if you want to modify and upgrade it because you can't just swap out the cams on this engine. So that's a little bit frustrating, but it's not a big problem because the engine incorporates a variable valve control system on the head. So that brings us really to the first point to watch out for. So often when you look to upgrade these models, you look to swap a turbo from the higher powered variant into the lower powered variant. Now, some of the lower powered variants of the 1.4 TFS SI engine particularly, and it probably affects others as well, it doesn't have variable valve timing on the exhaust. So the upshot of that is if you add the 150 brake horsepower turbocharger on one of these engines that doesn't have the variable valve control on the exhaust, it will be much more laggy. It will spool up much more slowly. And that's to the point of really annoying people. I've heard this comment a few times now. If you've got one of those lower powered variants, just swapping the turbo from a higher powered variant is no longer going to get you to that goal. So you just need to be aware of the power limit. So on the 125 horsepower variants, you'll find up to about 310 newton meters of torque can be handled quite successfully and quite easily. Obviously, it depends on the quality of the clutch that you've got, whether it's had a hard life, if it's been looked after or not. They tend to come with the the MQ200 gearbox. The higher powered 150 horsepower variant come with the MQ250 gearbox and the clutch on those can handle more power up to about 370 newton meters of torque quite easily. So when you're taking the power up on those lower powered variants, you really do need to think about the gearbox and the gear ratios as well, because just matching the power of the higher powered versions is not going to be exactly the same. Some people say that on the MQ200 gearbox, it feels like your ratios are much closer when you started hiking the power. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. I've always been reticent to recommend lighter flywheels on the engines with cylinder on demand. But again, through feedback and conversations I've had with people, the engine is very, very smooth running, even with a lighter flywheel fitted to it. I would still recommend you stick with the dual mass flywheel, but I do know some people who fitted a lighter single mass flywheel and they're quite happy with the end result. It's led to the engine being much more freely revving and much easier to control, particularly on a track environment. The very latest versions of the EA211, we're not going to touch on those too much because the Evo revision added a lot of nuances and dealt with a lot of issues, but it added port injection as well as the direct injection, which does pretty much eliminate carbon buildup on the back of the valves, which is still something that's going to affect those early EA211 engines, although nowhere near as badly as you do on the previous versions of the 1.4 TFSI engine. 
In fact, I've not had to do anything with mine, although my mileage is only about 54, 55,000 miles. I am expecting to have to do a carbon clean at some point on that engine just because of the engine. But so far, everything does seem to be running really, really cleanly and really efficiently. With regards to oil catch cans, um, further research has sort of revealed to me that the EA211 engine already has a system for collecting the oil droplets before they're returned to the intake manifold. So there may be benefits to fitting an oil catch can. If you're wondering where the PCV system is located, it's actually in most cases down the bottom of the engine near where the oil filter housing is. And from that point, you can intercept the pipe that would go up to the intake and fit a catch can in there. Considering that this engine already has a mechanism for capturing the oil particles, it does seem like it's something you don't need to worry too much about on these great little engines. So fuel pressure on these runs at about 3,000 PSI, usually just under in everyday running. And there's a limit of about 3,330 PSI where cutoff happens and it stops providing fuel to the engine. They consider that to be the absolute limit for the stock fuel system. So they seem to be the only limitations. And from that, you can get reasonable amounts of power. In fact, most people experience problems with other components in the car before they start having issues with the EA211 fuel supply delivery system. So unless you're really pushing the power, it does seem like the stock fuel system is adequate for most users. But please let me know in the comments what your experience has been with fuel system upgrades on the EA211 engine. The cooling system on the engine is quite a complex cooling system. In fact, if you look at this engine, you'll see that it's covered in pipes and channels and valves that all open and close under different conditions. They allow the engine to wall up extremely quickly. I note that on the EA211, there's a design where the exhaust manifold is actually built into the head. You've basically got one port coming out of the head on the EA211 and the catalyst is mounted directly on that. So it's nice and hot. It works efficiently from fairly low engine temperatures because it's so close to the exhaust gases and it avoids a lot of restrictions in the system and it minimizes the risk of theft because it now becomes a real hassle to get in uh, under the car into the engine bay to remove the catalyst. Whereas when it was sighted underneath the engine, it was a relatively easy you just chop the exhaust off and you've got it. So there's two loops on the cooling system. You've got a, you've got a low temperature cooling circuit that cools the intercooler. The exhaust gases are also cooled before they go through the turbocharger, which helps to prolong the life of the turbocharger and just reduces the hit that the oil takes in trying to keep everything lubricated and smooth. And please let me know in the comments if you've got any other little tips or pointers or things that you found out about this amazing engine. I want to do a really detailed mod video on the EA211 and it really does feel like the more I'm learning about it, the more there is to learn about it. There's certainly some really impressive turbo up upgrade options out there which we'll be going into in more detail in those mod videos but I'm particularly interested in power limits on the fuel system the fuel injection system as to what those limits are when you start tuning the engine and where you start to hit a problem because so far I found the fuel system to be very very flexible and able to supply reasonably good ratios of fuel even at the higher power figures but I'm sure there must be a limitation in there somewhere as most of these engines were fitted in front wheel drive cars you do need to think about getting that power down on the road so traction is a big issue when you start hitting the 200 to 250 horsepower region so for most people though with these projects they are aiming at about the 200 220 horsepower mark where they're not really going to hit too much of a problem with traction but if you want to push it more you do need to think about the differential and improving the way you can get the power down on the road. I have another video that goes into traction control systems and how to make sure you get the power down on the road. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. I really do appreciate all of your comments and if you haven't subscribed please do so because I would hate you to miss out on all the great content I've got coming up on the 1.4 TFSI. So thanks for your patience, thanks for watching and I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. See you in that one.